Okay guys, we are making another bobbin holder today. This time it's not going to be from wire, it's going to be from a tube. Normal stainless steel tube. The diameter of the tube is 3 millimeters, And then the, the inner diameter, it's around 1.7 millimeters. I want the tube to be to be five five centimeters long. I have marked it. Don't forget the goggles. I'm gonna put them on now. This bit is straight. Now we just have to file this one down. I filed it down so both sides are even. I have a normal toothpick in the rotary tool. This is a polishing paste. You see this tube, it, it has sharp edges on the outside and sharp edges inside. So I will dip it into the compound, start spinning and then try to take away the sharp edges from the inside. Originally it was a bit like this, and what I've done was I, I took a bit of sandpaper and I was spinning it around and I grind it down to make it pointy like this. So then when I'm when I'm polishing it, it will go inside the tube and then and then polish the polish the roof edges on the inside. I have polished it inside with a pointy bit so now I will just polish it on the on the outside edges and the and the top part so this bit was was once a bit like this but because I've been polishing with it too much it, it have gotten skinnier and worn out here but the top part on this one is good so I'm not gonna use Use a new bit for it. I I just gonna use use this old bit. What I'm doing is, I have my rotary tool spinning at the at the full speed, and I'm holding it with my bare hands. I could have used the glove. But then the problem is, I will not feel this getting hot, and what's going to happen, the felt polishing bit inside will start to burn, and that's bad. So that's why I'm using my bare hand, I'm holding the tube in the middle, and I'm polishing it until it gets hot, and that pre prevents the bit from going on fire, the polishing bit. So then as soon as it gets, hot, gets too hot, I'm turning it around, it's cool on, on this end. And I'm polishing it again until it gets hot. And then once th this part is hot, I switch back to the other one. And I keep doing this until until this is fully fully polished and smooth and not go and not going to rip the tread or break the tread when I'm winding. Alright guys, I've been polishing for about 10-15 minutes. That's that's the thinnest tread I have. Now we now we're gonna test it and see if it cuts it. Seventeen turns. It cut the tread. So I think it's not quite ready yet. <laughs> now guys, stainless steel tube is not easy. <laughs> it's not easy to polish. It's really fighting it. But the good thing is once it's polished, it'll be sturdy. And the tube is strong, 
it'll be a good bobbing holder once once this is polished nicely it should be pretty smooth pretty polished now the tube so I'm gonna keep it fixed like this and see how many times I can wrap it around the my imaginary hook until the trot breaks My thinnest tread that I have 109 turns. I think that's that's polished pretty good. There she is, guys. Tube for a bobbin holder. Fully polished on both ends. There is one end quite smooth. There is another end. Very smooth as well. I got our welding wire to 2.5 millimeters. So I have cut a piece of wire 18 centimeters long. And on both sides, I have filed it with a file so it's flat. And then also what I've done with my calipers, I have marked the center line. So now I know I have to bend it here. So now we're going to take our round nose pliers and then we're going to bend it. With the, with the 2.5 mil, it's not easy, but we're doing it. Here we go. We have to bend it in such a way so the tube fits inside the wire carcass without being loose. You see how the ends are uneven? So first we're going to take a file and file it down so they're even. I think that's pretty even now. We can we can continue in bending it. So let's straighten this out. Now we're gonna have to put a put a little band at the front of it, so then it, it looks up like a shoe. Here we go, I think that's good. The way I want the tube to be sitting in, in the wireframe is this. So this distance I want to be 1.5 mil, And then from here I'm going to bend the legs outwards. And I have marked from this, from here to here. So now I get to bend it. Okay guys, so now we have to bend this leg out. One and a half centimeter mark. I'm squeezing pretty tight and we're going to bend. I'm gonna see how, how she's looking. Here we go. I think I, I think I banded this one too far, so I'm gonna bring it back. Okay, so now it's starting to look more and more like a like a bobbin holder. The way our tube fits into our wireframe it's still a bit loose. That means we have to close it in. We're going to use our handle of a file. We're going to put it there. And as we're closing it with the, with the pliers, this is going to stop it from closing too far.
Okay guys, so I finished bending it. So now when you put our tube, it goes in there in there quite nicely. And now there's there's just a little bit of movement, but it's but it's good. So now what we're going to do, we're going to get our braided line and we're going to wrap it around here just to see which way the tube is sitting. Okay guys, so it is pretty straight this way. It looks to be pretty straight from the side, this way up. And it's pretty straight this way as well. We have the tube ready, the wireframe is bended, so now we're just going to use our copper wire, it's 0.5 mil in diameter. I'm gonna bring it to the edge right there. I got about 80 centimeters of copper wire. Touching turns all the way down. And and when the solder when the solder gonna hit the wire, it's gonna be a really secure connection. Now I'm going to take three turns back so I can do a whip finish. One, two, three. Let's flux. Cotton board. It's time to solder. Here I have two kinds of soldering wire. This one is 3 mil thick, this one is 1 mil. I'm going to be using 1 mil to solder this part because it will, mel it will melt quicker and therefore it will go into the crevices between the copper wire quicker and solder the whole surface area. That is solder, solder pretty good. Okay guys, so I have filed our solder part. Now it's smooth. Uh, and it doesn't have the step anymore. Where we did the whip finish, there was a little step from the wire. It doesn't have it. And, and this way, it is pretty flat as well. I have already made the grooves into the wire with the file so when we solder these balls on onto the end of it it's it gonna help us to hold it so now we got our ball ball prepared it's just big enough not to not, not to let the spool of thread slip past it so it's going to be nice and secure there, and the spool is going to rate, rotate on it nicely. Ooh. 
we are done with the soldering part but I feel that these legs are too far apart so yes yeah, so I'm going to bend them back I'm gonna hold it like this make sure it's at the right angles centered like that it's time to bend the legs to size so it can fit the fit the spool of thread I'm gonna mark three three centimeters I have already made the marks there the edge of the plier I have just just where the scratch starts and now I'm going to just just turn it around because it's easier to bend it this way and I'm going to bend it Yeah, it does hold the thread, but but the thread gets stuck on these parts. So now we have to put a nice bed bend into these parts. So I'm pretty happy with the way it is bended on these sides. So now I'm going to bend this ball back towards the center. Yeah, we definitely need more. Yeah, it's loose. So just a little bit, little band on this side, towards the center. You see how it's loose? So we're almost there. Now we need to be really careful. I feel like we have to bend this side a little bit more, but if we bend it too much, then it's going to squeeze the squeeze the spool of thread too hard. Yeah, in there pretty good. Spins with just enough tension to apply even even wraps and secure materials but not enough tension to um, break the thread. I got my heat shrink tube from the edge of the wire to the to the start of the band of the wireframe, like that. So now I can see it's 2.2 mil, and then I'm gonna add three more, three, three more mil. So one, two, three. So yes, yeah, so it's gonna be two and a half. I have already marked a little scratch there by bringing it to the edge and just marking a scratch. So, yeah, so now, so now I know where to cut with my scissors. Here we go. Heat shrink tube is on the on the bobby holder. Make sure it's right down to the edge of the of the copper wire. We are gonna we're gonna continue spinning it. And it's gonna take its shape. Here we go. Finished bobbing. Yeah, I'm pretty happy how to yeah how it turned out. The tube is very straight from this angle, this way, pretty straight this way. I made two other bobbings off camera and I have to show you. So I have made this one. It's exactly the same as this one, only the difference is the tube here is longer. It's about six centimeters or so. I have made a smaller, smaller bobbin holder. It's it's one one point five mil wire and a smaller sta stainless steel tube. That was the hardest one to make because the smaller the tube is, the harder it is to polish it and get it smooth. That was yeah yeah that one took me a while. If I if I would film that, the video will be way too long. 
so I just made them off camera. Let's try our bobbing that I have made on camera. It's the one with the ticker tube. And the thread I have there is six odd in black. Very good, I like it, even though it's a ticker tube and it's quite uh, quite a thin thread. It winds it very nicely. I like the tension and the smoothness. Now I feel rewarded for um, for polishing it for salon. We have finished the bobbings. Small, medium, and big. They're polished, ready to go. Let's put them to good use. 